Hello. All right. So in this video, what I'm going to be talking about and showing you is an alternative method to creating lace up details and alternative as opposed to the other video I have about lace up, which I will call the original or old method. Um, so what is this method and is it better? Well, it's better in a lot of situations, but it's not strictly better um, in every situation. There are situations where the old method is still better. So what are the benefits and strengths of, of this way of creating lace up details? Well, the main benefit is that it scales. And what I mean by that is it doesn't matter if you're creating 10 lacings or 60, you're still doing basically the same process and the same amount of work. And that's really, really powerful, especially when you compare it to the old method, where if you just had three or four lacings, it's it's fine. You can just sew those up real quick. But once you get into 10 or 20 or more, it becomes really tedious to try and sew those up. And, and this just does it automatically. It takes care of everything. Uh, another big benefit of this is that you can do very, very small lacings. Again, with that old method, trying to sew on that one tiny edge onto the thing is it's tedious and not fun. And with this, just takes care of it. it does it automatically again. And the another big benefit or the last one is that it can do shaped panels very well. Um, in the old method, it, with the shaped panels or the shaped lacing where it was like kind of a V shape, it was actually very hard to calculate the length that the lacings need to be. But when you do it this way, it just takes care of it. It's it does it. So this sounds amazing. Why isn't this just the best way of doing lacings like this? Well, that there is one big drawback, and that is that it takes a lot of setup. There's a lot of front end work involved in this. And so if you're just doing a lacing where you just need three or four, the old method is still better. This is mainly for very large, complex lacings. Um, but it does take a lot of front end setup work to get it to work. But once you do all that work, it just creates it auto automatically and quickly. So uh, there are a few other small drawbacks, which we'll get into when we start working on this, but let's go ahead and show you how to do this. All right. All right, so I've got this dress here. Um, now let's say I wanted to make a lacing all the way down the back. How would I do that with this method? Well, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna figure out the outer edge of this kind of piece of fabric that's going to have all the grommets in it. So I'm going to create an internal line here and I'm going to extend trim to pattern outline so it stretches all the way down. And then I want to find the inner edge of this or create the inner edge of it. So I'm going to go like this, like that. And then maybe I'll move it over a little bit. Okay, so this right here, all these two rectangles here or these two lines here, these are creating that strip of fabric that all the grommets are going to be attached to. Now this middle part here, I'm actually going to delete that. So I'll have a gap there because I want that, that open gap. Um, I'm not going to delete that yet though. So I've got these two lines. Now what I need to do is I actually need to find the midpoint of these two lines. And that's really important to find the midpoint. So I'm going to grab those two internal lines and I'm going to distribute internal line between the segments. So that creates a middle internal line like that. Now what I'm going to do is I need to create the spacing for the grommets. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to create an internal line right here, and then I'm going to copy and paste it. And then instead of left clicking to place this internal line, I'm going to right click and that will give you the uh, interval paste. And I'm just going to go about 30 millimeters and we'll go all the way down. It's probably too much, yeah, so just delete the extras. All right, so now these are your intervals. Now what we need to do is I'm going to use these internal lines to actually create points along this midpoint, or along this midline. And the way you do that is you just select this middle line right here, and you add points to the intersection. And now wherever that internal line intersects, it creates an internal line. Now, one of the reasons I used internal lines to do this rather than just use the split line tool is because I need to use these cross internal lines to actually line up the ellipses that I'm going to create for the grommets. So just create this. And what those, what these um, 
since you have this vertical and or um, <laughs> horizontal and vertical lines, this grommet or this ellipse will actually snap right to the center point. And that is really important uh, because what we have to do again is we have to double click that. So select everything, copy and paste it. And you wanna copy and paste and now it should snap right to this next point down. And then you can right click and do an interval paste and it will paste at even intervals all the way down. So I'm just gonna paste it all the way down. Not too far. And now you can see all of these circles line up perfectly. And that's why it's important to use this or this horizontal line rather than just segmenting these. Because if you don't, if you don't um, have this line in here, this won't snap to the center point. Okay, so now we're actually done with all of these um, lines, these uh, horizontal internal lines. So we can delete them. So just select, you can just select the uh, single point right there and delete and, and it will delete the entire line. So now we have this, we've got our correct setup for our lacing. And this is, this is our start point. All right, so we've got all this done. What we've got to do next is take all of, or take this internal line here, and I'm going to right click, extend trim and add point to pattern outline so that it segments up this. And then I'm going to take all of these edges here and I'm going to trace them. So you would use your trace tool up here, trace as a pattern, and you want to create a pattern like that. So I use my trace tool to trace this piece right here. Now I'm actually done with these. I don't want these um, circle uh, internal lines here. So I'm gonna double click and then double click again. So double clicking once selects the entire object, double clicking twice, so like triple click, triple clicking kind of, selects all the internal lines in the, uh, in the pattern piece. And that's actually something that's going to, I'm going to be using a lot with this. So um, just to let you know what I'm doing there. Um, so I don't want the circles, but I do want these two internal lines. So I'm going to deselect these and those and just delete those. Uh, so I just deleted the circles. Okay, now what I wanna do is I want to unfold this. So I'm going to click on this internal line here and I'm going to unfold it. Now what I wanna do is I want to go in and create an internal line from here to here like this. So I only need to create one because again, I can copy and paste this and this should snap right up to the next interval. And then I'll right click and I will paste. I think there was like 30 something. I'll do a bit more because it's okay if it goes over, I can just delete the excess like that. Okay, so now I've got all of these angled internal lines here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to double click and select everything, but I don't wanna select the sides, so I'll deselect the sides. So I just have these selected. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to offset his internal line and let's go really small. Now, okay, so here's another thing. So in Clo, they've got this really, really awesome feature where you can offset the internal lines from both sides at the same time. And this is actually really important in this technique that I'm showing you. Um, in Marvelous Designer, I don't think they've added this yet. So if you're using Marvelous Designer, what you'll have to do if you want to do this is offset as internal line from one side and we'll just do about three millimeters here to just show you what you need to do. And then while these are highlighted, after you've selected them, you don't wanna deselect them. You want to lock these internal lines right here. And then you want to actually go in and lock these side internal lines as well. And then you want to also lock the pattern outline. And then you have to go in and manually drag to select all the original internal lines again, because you locked the offset internal lines. Now, the reason I didn't just double click and double click again to select all of these internal lines like that is because even though they're locked, it will, it will actually select the locked internal lines um, if you double click and double click again. You can't see that they're selected, but they will be selected when you try and offset. They will offset all the locked internal lines as well. So you actually have to go in and manually drag, select them, and then you're going to offset and you're going to reverse the direction. 
and then you can go in and un or uh, de uh, <laughs> unlock your internal lines and unlock your pattern outlines. Now, the other problem with doing it this way is we always need to delete these middle internal lines. So if you're in, if you're using Marvelous Designer, what you're going to have to do is manually go in and delete all of these middle internal lines. So you're going to have to do a couple extra steps if you're using Marvelous Designer. Now, let me undo this. For Clo, let me just show you that process, which is actually much easier. So let's undo a bunch. Back. Oops. Did I? OK. I went back too far. Let's redo this. So go up by about 30 something. And then, cool. OK. So for Clo, all you need to do is double click and then deselect these lines over here. And then you want to uh, offset his internal line. And I'm going to make these very small lacing. So I'm going to do one millimeter. I'm going to do both sides. Hit OK. Now, before you deselect these, again, what I have to do is I have to right click and I want to lock all of those um, offset internal lines that I made. And then I actually want to lock uh, these on the side as well. And then again, my pattern outline is also locked. And then I can just go in and manually or just select all of these, which are the original middle internal line and delete it. And then we can unlock this and unlock the pattern outline. So you're left with this. Now the next thing I want to do. So if you're using Marvelous Designer, again, you would have gone through those extra steps because you only to delete that middle line, you would have had to go in and manually selected the middle line to delete it. Um, but you don't have to do that with, with Clo because you can offset it both sides at once. So next step, we want to delete this excess on the side. So I'm going to double click here. I'm going to double click here. And I'm going to cut. So we're cut off the sides. OK. So now what we want to do, we've got this all cut is I want to sew this piece onto the back here. So let's move this back piece over here and over here. So this is what we're left with. So I'm going to sew all the way up the side like this, and then I want to sew all the way up the middle piece here. Now, a quick tip for sewing something like this. When you're sewing a very long edge to an internal line like this, and there are other internal lines that are spaced close to it, or there are edges that are spaced close to it. What's going to happen is that your sewing, when you're using your free sewing, is going to want to jump off to either another edge or an edge or another um, pattern outline. So if you don't want that to happen, all you need to do is just go in and you can lock all of these. You can lock the internal lines and the pattern outlines so that when you sew to this edge right here, it will just sew and it won't jump. It'll sew on the edge that you want it to sew to. So just a quick tip for making your sewing life a little bit easier. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side here. Oops. Come down. Sew it all the way up. Now I'm going to superimpose this over. Oops. Superimpose over. Now what I want to do is I want to take this piece right here and I'm going to copy and paste it. Just copy and regular paste. And then you're going to right click on it and flip horizontally. And then you're going to do the same thing on this. You're going to sew from here to here. And go. Sew it right on top like that. Right, and then superimpose this over. Okay, go ahead and simulate that and let one just pull out one so that it goes on top of the other like that. All right, we're almost done. Um, okay, so now all you need to do, well, hang on, let me. All right, so we've got this. Now what we need to do is just go in, double click, Double click again, select all of those, and cut. 
So that would just be right click and cut. Give it a second to figure things out and there you go. And then do the same thing on this one, double click, select all those internal lines, right click, cut, just regular cut. Don't wanna cut and sew. And then once it cuts, you just go in and you delete all of the excess. So select all of the big pieces all the way down. Delete those and delete all of this stuff on this side. And this is about the most tedious part of the entire process right here, which is really nice. Now, obviously it is a kind of complex process at the beginning, but when you're doing, when you're creating something really long like this, it's so much easier than trying to do it, you know, sew things on that way. And there you go. Oh, and then let's go ahead and uh, unlock all the pattern outlines and that, and I'm going to delete this right here. So I'm gonna delete this middle bit like that, like that. Let's turn that off so we can see. And now we have created the lacing. Um, now, a couple things you can do to make this look a little bit more fancy is turn up your rendering thickness. So I'm gonna add about two millimeters of rendering thickness to make these look a little bit thicker. Now. There are a couple more benefits to doing it this way, um, even compared to the other way. Um, and one of those is getting them, uh, getting the laces organized um, in the correct way, like going back to front. Because everything is just spaced really nice and even like this, we can go in. Oh, and when we've got small laces, the other thing I wanna do is turn down my particle distance. I mentioned it's down to like three. Since they're such tiny pieces, you do need to lower particle distance. So I'm gonna turn those down to three. Anyway, now I want to get some of these behind and some of these in front. And the easiest way to do that is to go up to your select mesh box and you can just select half. So go in and drag out about half like that and then go in and you can manually move them back like that. And now those are on the back. And then on the other side, you just take the other half like that select that half and move these back. And now all of your laces are going in the correct direction, really simply and easily. Um, another thing you can do if you wanna get these a little bit more organized, and this helps for scaling. So one of the things that's not so great about this is that the edges, and it's, this doesn't matter when the lacings are really small, it kinda of matters when the lacings are a little bit wider and there's more of an angle to them. But if you just scale like this, because the edges are angled and not flat, it's it's a trapezoid, not a flat, not just a rectangle, is when you scale, these can become slightly uneven. Now, normally this doesn't matter really at all, but sometimes it can, just be aware of it. Anyway, if you want to organize these a little bit better, what you can do is you can go in, you can select all of these, you can rotate on the x-axis like this. So they're all straight and flat. Let me move these up here. And then you can go in with all these selected again and you can uh, align them either to the left or the right. We'll just go to the left and that will make them in a nice flat organized way. So again, we'll rotate those and align these to the right. Now everything is nice and organized and this can help if you need to scale these up. So if I wanna scale some of these in right in here, I can go and look at these and say, okay, I wanna scale these down a little bit. It's much easier just to grab them and scale them when they're flat instead of angled and kind of bring them in that way. Um, so that is the basic process to making this kind of lacing. Now I'll do another one in the front to do like an angled panel and show you how that works. Um, and I'll go, I'll go through that one a little bit faster just so you can see the process again and how to adapt it to different shapes. But this is, this is overall the basic process for creating this. And again, it takes a lot of front end work, but it just, you know, everything is right where it's supposed to be. And 
and it just works correctly. Oh, and these grommets, you would just do them the same way as the old method. You just cut them out and put the, uh, the grommets on the uh, invisible pattern piece. And so just do that the same way. Uh, but yeah, if you've got a lot of lacing to do, this is the way to do it. And this is, so there we go. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a lace up on the front that's got this kind of V shape and show you some of the differences and some of the problems you might have doing this kind of lace up detail. So the first thing I want to do is just draw out an internal line where I want my, my lacing to attach to. Now, normally I like to keep these straight because if you keep them straight, um, when you have a bunch of points here, it's much, or if you have it straight as opposed to curved, when you have a bunch of points, you can just copy and paste the ellipses for the grommets um, at, at intervals. If it's curved, you can't paste them at intervals because you can't uh, paste like an array along a curved line. And so you'd have to go in and place those manually. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, if you make these curved, you can't just do like the copy paste a bunch of, of circles. You have to put them on manually. Now I'm not going to be putting the grommets in on this. I'm just going to be doing the lacing um, because you know the grommets are the same basic process. And, and it's lacing that's different. So uh, I will be making this curved for this um, demonstration. All right, so this is actually going to be my middle point uh, or my middle line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to offset as internal line. I'm going to offset from both directions. And again, if you're using Marvelous Designer, you'll have to uh, do that one way and then offset again the, uh, with the reverse direction. Okay. So now I will take all these, extend to the pattern outline like that. And now what I wanna do is I want to add a bunch of uh, points on this middle line right here. So I'm gonna split the line, I'm gonna uniform split it. Sorry about that much. Okay. So now I have this. And again, what I need to do is I just need to trace this like that. Now, if you don't want to trace it, what you can do is you can just take this edge right here. You can cut and sew and then copy and paste that. And then, you know, merge this back together or not merge it back together. I, I like to have it together, but that's another way you can do it if you don't want to trace. So now what I need to do is just unfold this right here. So now I've got this unfolded piece like that. Okay, I've got this piece here. Now we just need to add the internal lines in. So I'm going to start creating the internal lines. Now, as you can see, I've got a bunch of curve points along with these segment points. And the curve points can be pretty distracting. And when I'm trying to match up internal line to internal line, sometimes these curve points get in the way. So what I'm gonna do is just delete all the curve points on, on this line here. So I'm just gonna double click all of those. And an interesting thing about deleting curve points, if you double click the line like this, and like this to select the entire line and you right click, you won't see any delete all cur or delete all curve point options. So for some reason, if the whole line is selected, it won't have the delete all curve point op or curve point option. You have to have at least one point deselected like that. And then when you right click, there's delete all curve points. So if it doesn't show up, that's why. So let's do that over here too. Again, no delete all curve points. So all you gotta do is deselect one point and then there it is. All right, so now that's much cleaner and easier. And actually I'm gonna delete these also because I don't need that internal line there. And another thing I need to delete or just delete this point so that everything so that this isn't cut out because my lacing is gonna come across here and I actually need this pattern to be closed. So I'm gonna delete that point there as well. Okay, now we're ready to create our lacing. And since this is a V shape and uneven, I can't just make one and copy and paste it. I have to actually go all the way up like this, but that's not too hard. And since it is also symmetric, I don't need to do go the other way because I can just, um, copy it and flip it horizontally. So 
just make all of your internal lines like this. Go more down here. And then I can cut off this excess because I don't need that. Delete that. So all we're left with is this piece here. Now again, all you gotta do, double click everything, right click, offset as internal line. And I'm gonna make these a little bit wider this time to show you one of the uh, problems with this method. So I'll go about six on each side. So that's 12, uh, 12 millimeters total. Okay, so I'm gonna lock these now. So let's just go ahead and lock those. Lock my pattern outline so I can delete the middle lines. Now I don't think I, I really explained exactly why it's important to delete the middle line. So let's just look at this real quick and tell you why. So you might say, well, why do you actually need to delete that middle line? Couldn't you just leave it? Kind of, but the reason I always delete that middle line is because when it comes time to cut this, if that middle line is there, you can't just select everything and cut it because that will cut the middle line as well. So you have to go in and select like this before you can cut it. And the whole point of this method is to cut out the tedious parts as much as possible. So if I can just delete all the middle internal lines right at first, then, oops, what the, then that's what I'm gonna do. Because it just saves time later down the line. Okay, let's do this again. There we go, so I'm going to lock these. Oops. Lock those, and especially if you're doing something with a lot of lacing, it really saves time to delete those middle lines. Okay, so we've deleted those. Now we can take this, and we're just going to, let's, let me lock this line so that it doesn't sew to that. And then we just sew it on. And sew it on the other side, like that. And then we'll superimpose over, and then we'll copy and paste, and right click, flip, horizontally. So it flips the other way, and then we'll sew this one on as well. and I'll superimpose over. Now we can go in and again, we can select all of our internal lines like that, cut them, select all the internal lines and cut them, and then just delete the excess. Now you can see one of the issues with this method is that because it doesn't create straight rectangles when it creates, the, um, when it creates these strings, it creates trapezoids on the edge. And these trapezoids, this length here is going to be quite a bit longer than the actual width of, of the string. Now, the reason this matters is be, if, if, if a grommet is sewn on, or if, if a grommet is placed on, this sewing can be wider than the grommet. And so you're just gonna have to kind of manually adjust it. I haven't figured out a good way to like fix this issue, it's just something you'll have to deal with when you're using it. And it's, the more angled your, um, your th the, the lacing is, the worse this effect is going to be. So, just something to keep aware, uh, be aware of. So anyway, go ahead and delete all of these. And sometimes when these are wide, is wide or pretty wide, it's hard to tell which ones to select and which ones not. And, in, and an easy way to tell is the one with the extra um, dot right here. This is the one you don't want to delete. So if you ever get confused, just look at the edge and see if it's got the extra segment point there. Because you want to keep the ones with the extra segment point and delete the ones without the segment point. So we'll just delete those and delete those. And then again, everything is already sewn on and oh, did I, no, 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 I didn't. Okay, I just locked it. Let me unlock my pattern outlines, there we go. Okay, so now we can cut this line right here and delete this underneath. And now we have our nice lacing like this.
Okay, yeah, that's it. All right. Okay, now what I want to show you is how to create lacing down a seam. So let's say I wanted lacing down this side seam. You'll notice that the side seam and most side seams in general are curved, they're not straight. And it is more difficult to um, create lacing on a curved edge rather than, rather than a straight edge. So I'm gonna work on a straight edge even though this, um, this seam right here is curved. And the way you do that, it's pretty simple. All you gotta do is take both edges like this and I'm going to offset as internal line and then you just wanna offset by say 16 like that and so even though this is a curved seam when it's sewn together you can think of it as just a straight seam and so now the width here is 16 so 16 plus 16 is 32 so what I would do is I would just create a rectangle polygon with my width of 32 so you want your width to be 32 and then I'm not going to worry about getting the exact length yet um, I'm just going to stretch it out to about the right length. Okay, now you just need to sew it on. So I'm gonna sew it on, or actually no. First, <laughs> I want to cut off the excess here. So take these, extend them to the pattern outline, and then cut them. So now we're going to cut those two things off. And then you're going to sew this edge to that edge, and this edge to that edge. Now, these obviously aren't the right width, so you can look at your edit sew or the right length. So you just look at your edit sewing tool and say, okay, I'm off by 84. So I need to pull this down by about that much. Look at your edit sewing. I'm off by about 10 or 15. So I'm off by a bit too much there. Pull that up. Off by three, off by four. Okay, so that's pretty close. So then you just superimpose to the side and let me copy and symmetrically paste this across to the other side as well. So it's the same on both sides. And then again, you just do the same process as on the back, which is you would right click or um, distribute internal line between segments. So you get a line right exactly down the middle. I'm gonna just cut and sew that. And then you would, uh, let's see, I want my lacing not to be in the middle, or not to start from the middle. Uh, if you had grommets, you probably would, but, um, well, yeah, let's just do it in the middle, I guess. Distribute internal line between segment. But actually, this line could be anywhere, um, as long as it's the same on both sides. So I'm just gonna offset by internal line right here, and show you, so. This line right here that I'm creating now, that's where your lacing is actually going to, to start and end. So we'll do it from, from right there. And then you just do your split lines, or if you actually wanna put the grommets in, I would do the horizontal internal lines and add points to in the intersections. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to split the line a whole bunch. And you want to make sure you remember how many you have so you can do the same thing to the other side so we'll do like 37 uniform split and then we'll go 37 again and then and then you just do the same process but i'm actually going to show you something else here real quick um and it's going to be the same process as i was doing here but i'm going to show you a more fun version of it so let's say i want to do something really kind of crazy like i want some curved, oops, let's do, let's see, let's go like out to there. So let's say I want some kind of crazy curved lacing like this. I want it to go all the way up like this. How would I do this? Well, I do it pretty much the same method as I did along the seam. So I would take this line right here I would offset his internal line and I would offset both sides. We'll offset by about 12, like that. And I wanna convert those to curve points. I want everything to be curve points here. And then see, I did 12, okay. So that's 12, so I would just create another rectangle with the width of 24. Wait a minute, did I, is that right? What's the width here? Okay, yeah, 24. 
Okay, 24, yes. I did that, calculated that correctly. And then I'm going to take this and that, and I'm going to cut them. So we cut that out, delete that, and we'll delete the same thing on the other side. And then I'll take this piece that is 24 millimeters wide, and I'll sew it on there, and sew it on there. And then I will go in and adjust the length. I'm going to use my edit sewing tool to check my length. I'm off by 226 and 188. Now important, an important thing to note, when you have these curves, one edge is always going to be longer than the other. It's just the way curves work. Um, the outside curve is going to be longer than the, than the inside curve. So when you're scaling this to try and match, you just want to get it about even in between the two lengths. So again, this is minus 44, this is minus 81. So, okay, 1.2 and 38.7, so I want minus 16 plus 21. Okay, minus 18, yeah. So they're about even, they're about, even in terms that they they have the same op or difference on each side. So then you superimpose on the side, copy symmetrically paste, superimpose sides, so both sides are sewn on. And again, because it is a straight edge on a curved edge, you will get a little bit of de deformation, but it's not gonna be too bad. And we're actually not going to worry about this too much. What did I forget to delete here? Did I? What's there we go. Okay. So that's fine. Now what we're gonna do is again the same thing I was doing earlier. So I'm going to offset from this edge. And I actually want to offset closer to this close or this edge over here. So I'm just gonna offset by about five. And then I'll add a bunch of segment points. Go about twenty-seven. Oh, whoops, I forgot to split these in half. Never mind. Okay, first thing we need to do is actually split these in half. Those are symmetric, not. Okay, so distribute internal line between segments. Okay. And then split that. So we do want that split. Okay, now we can offset as internal line right here. And I'll just offset by like three. Okay, and then uniform split. Oops all of these. So we'll do about 27 again, uniform split, 27. Okay. Um, now what we need to do is we need to copy and paste one of them, one of those halves, and then we will unfold it. So copy, paste, unfold, and then create your one um, internal line there. And then copy and paste it all the way up. So we'll copy and paste about 27, 28 times. And then delete the extras. All right, and again, since we're working on something straight, um, we don't need to make the other side or anything like that. We just need this one side, or these this one angle. So I'll cut off the excess here, delete that. Double click all these lines, we will offset as internal line and I want both sides and we'll do about two millimeters. Hit okay. I'm gonna lock those and we'll yeah, lock those. And then I will select all of these. And remember you have to drag select, not double click um, because it will actually select all your locked lines as well. And then I can double click all of these and I want to extend trim to pattern outline. So it pushes all the lines all the way out to the pattern outline like this. And this can take a second. Okay, there we go. And then I want to sew this piece on. Remember, you don't want to cut it yet. You want to sew it first. So we'll, let's see, what I want to do is I do want to lock these two lines here so it doesn't jump to those lines when I'm sewing. So I'm going to sew from here to here and from here to here, here to here, and then this side, oh, let's lock these as well. Just make everything so much easier. And then sew all the way up. Then I will superimpose over, and then I'll copy and paste. Flip this horizontally, 
and then I will sew on this internal line again. Now I will superimpose that over as well. Oops, let's grab this. Bring that out. Oh, uh, let me just uh, lock this so it's that side because I'm only doing the one side for now. Okay. Then all you got to do again is just double click everything and cut it. Double click everything and cut it. And again, if you had those middle lines, you'd have to actually go in and individually select each one of these internal lines to cut it. It would not be fun. So that's why it's important to delete those middle lines. And then this is the tedious part, but it's not even that tedious. You just select all of these pieces to delete them. And this would be the same process you would use to sew across any type of seam. Like if you were sewing up the side seam of a pant leg, you would do the same thing where you would offset as internal line and, and then create a rectangle that is the same width as the combined offset and sew that rectangle on and then use this method to create the lacing. And There we go. Hang on, let me just unfreeze these. Remove linked editing and activate those and then sew them together. Okay. And there you go. Now you have this really cool lacing and you can do it just all over the dress however you want when you if you do it like this. Um, and then of course you can go in and you can rotate these and you can use the, uh, this, what is it? The select mesh to move them into the right orientation, like making one side go under and one side go over just like that. And then adding in some thickness and you'd probably want to change the material to something a little bit stiffer because this is uh, the very thin default material that doesn't have much strength to it. And you can really create lace lacing all over fairly easily. So that is the method, um, that is this particular method of creating lacing. It's really good for this kind of, for making a lot of complex, interesting, interest, intricate lacing uh, quickly and fairly easily. So I hope this has been helpful. Until next time, bye.